Hello everyone, today we are going to walk in Peter and Paul Fortress and we'll start from here. You can see down there above the water a hare escaping from a flood. That's a little monument, one of those superstitions of St. Petersburg. You see people casting coins and making wishes. Uh, but it is also the symbol of Peter and Paul Fortress. And on our way through the fortress, we are going to see lots of hares, uh, rabbits, bunnies and so on. Don't forget to count. Now let's try our luck. Kids, let's go try our luck. Peter and Paul Fortress was built as a fortification system for protection, so it needed to be especially strong. You can see how thick the walls of Peter and Paul Fortress are. They are double, in fact. The outer wall is 5 meters thick, and then the inner wall is 3 meters thick. Between the outer and the inner walls, there are cells that were used for different uh, purposes, for example, for keeping munitions or food supplies. Here you can see a plan of Peter and Paul Fortress. You can see it is a correct hexagon stretched with bastions on the corners. It was a perfect fortification structure with two additional ravelins and moats with water on the accesses to Peter and Paul Fortress. And you also see that it was like a town in the city. In fact, this is where the first settlement of St. Petersburg started. It was the fortress that was first called Sankt Petersburg. Later on, this name spread onto the new city, and the fortress was called St. Apostles Peter and Paul Fortress, after the cathedral on its territory. St. John's Gate of Peter and Paul Fortress was built as a triumphal arch, and it was meant to symbolize the victories of Peter the Great over Sweden. So over here on top you can see the bar relief depicting uh, allegorically the victories of Peter the Great over Charles XII of Sweden and also on either side of the gate there are niches where you can see two sculptures depicting Minerva. Minerva the goddess of wisdom, the patroness of arts and the patroness of war. Over here we are on the main laneway of Peter and Paul Fortress. It feels like a street of some old town. You can see Peter and Paul Fortress was like a town in the city. And uh, Peter the Great liked regularity and liked planning. So he worked out plans for typical houses for poor people, typical houses for merchants, and typical houses for nobility. Uh, for nobility. And over here you can see all these plans embodied in the house for munitions, which was built according to typical plan for the poor, house, uh, for the poor houses. And then on the left-hand side, there is the engineer's house, which was built according to the typical plan for merchants' houses. And further on, there will be one more house that was built according to typical plan for noblemen's houses. The monument to Peter the Great on the territory of Peter and Paul Fortress is quite ambivalent. A lot of people keep asking me, 
why is the body so long and why is the head so small? The author of the monument, Russian sculptor Shemyakin, used the same dimensions uh, as the ancient icon painters used for, uh, for icons. So that's why the body seems to be too long, whereas the head was made according to the after-death mask of Peter the Great. So you have a chance to look in the real face of Peter the Great here. You can see that this monument is another place of superstition in St. Petersburg. So people come here to make wishes. Whenever you can see something as polished as hands of Peter the Great, it means that you need to rub or hold uh, the fingers and make your wish over here. Naturally, the main square of Peter and Paul Fortress is the Cathedral Square. So the cathedral dedicated to St. Apostles Peter and Paul, um, supposedly created by Domenico Trezzini, the first architect of St. Petersburg. You can have a look at the belfry. It is 122 and a half meters high. Until quite recently, it remained the highest architectural structure of our city. Uh, nowadays, the cathedral is the burial vault of all the Romanovs, starting from Peter the Great. The other buildings that you can see over here are the Commandant's house. The Commandant of Peter and Paul Fortress had his special office over here and also lived um, on the territory of the fortress. And the Commandant's house was built according to Peter the Great's project for the houses for nobility. Opposite the cathedral, there is the mint and it is the active mint still. They coin commemorative coins and medals over here. And also in the square, you can see that yellow and white small house. It is called the boat house. Nowadays, they keep a replica of Peter the Great's boat over there. That small boat from which the Russian fleet started. In the end of this lane, you can see black and white striped doors. There was a prison on the territory of Peter and Paul Fortress, located in Trubetskoy Bastion, right in the end of this lane. The prison was a political one, political prison of preliminary confinement, nowadays is a museum dedicated to political life and political prisoners of this fortress. Floods have always been a calamity for our city. So the never gate of Peter and Paul Fortress has all those plaques showing the marks of the floods of different periods of time. So you can see how high the water could reach uh, during a flood. So over here, for example, the highest flood ever in St. Petersburg reached the mark of 4 meters and 10 centimeters. People could sail boats along the streets of St. Petersburg and it happened in November of 1824. There are a lot more things to see on the territory of Peter and Paul Fortress. For example, you can see an exhibition over here dedicated to the science and technology. And another museum over there is called the Street of Times. But we are going to the top to the roofs of the bastions of Peter and Paul Fortress to have a nice beautiful walk and panoramic views. Over there you can see two cannons on the walls of Peter and Paul Fortress. One of these cannons gives a shot exactly at noon, 12 o'clock, and that's another symbol of St. Petersburg. As you can see, there is a lot to see on the territory of Peter and Paul Fortress, even without going to the cathedral or the prison. So come and see yourself.
So how many hares, rabbits and bunnies have you counted during our walk?